This is Judges 10. Abimelech is dead. A woman threw a millstone down on his head, and his servant finished him off with a sword. From verse 56 of the last chapter, quote, Thus God repaid the wickedness of Abimelech. Justice always comes, Galatians 6, 7, quote, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, this he will also reap, end quote. Abimelech sowed evil and reaped the harvest of it. It took over three years, Judges 9.22, but God did bring the consequences. Even if God delays, he will bring the consequences. With regard to the delay, the nature of sowing and reaping is that we sow in one season and reap in another. It seemed Abimelech would be fine for a while, but the season of reaping came around. The millstone is a reminder that we reap what we sow. Verse 1. After Abimelech, Tola the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, arose to save Israel. He lived in Shamir in the hill country of Ephraim. He judged Israel 23 years and died and was buried in Shamir. Comment. That's everything we know about Tola. He judged Israel 23 years and during that time there was no mention of foreign oppression or any other problems and that's because of Tola. Judges 2.18 quote, When Yahweh raised up judges for them, then Yahweh was with the judge and saved them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. End quote. Isn't it even better to prevent problems than it is to solve them? Let's pray that Yahweh provides us leaders like Tola who keep us out of problems. The next judge coming up is much the same. Verse 3. After him, Jair the Gileadite arose, and he judged Israel 22 years. He had 30 sons who rode on 30 donkey colts, and they had 30 cities, which are called Havoth Jair to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. Jair died and was buried in Camon. Comment. Jair was from the far side of the Jordan River in Gilead. Havoth Jair means tent villages of Jair. Jair's 30 sons spread themselves out over 30 different tent villages, probably because their flocks and herds were so numerous. Genesis 13.6 and Numbers 32.1. His 30 sons on 30 donkeys in 30 tent villages are a testament that God blessed him. Again, there was peace during Jair's time, but after he judged Israel for 22 years, verse 6, the children of Israel again did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight and served the Baals, the Ashtaroth, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the children of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines. They abandoned Yahweh and didn't serve him. Yahweh's anger burned against Israel and he sold them into the hand of the Philistines and into the hand of the children of Ammon. Comment, once again, when Israel had no judge, they descended into idolatry. Ordinarily, the Philistines lived on the southwest coast and the Ammonites lived on the far side of the Jordan. Both of these people are oppressing Israel, so Israel's getting it from east and west. Now with respect to the Ammonites on the east, verse 8, they troubled and oppressed the children of Israel that year. For 18 years they oppressed all the children of Israel that were beyond the Jordan in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. The children of Ammon passed over the Jordan to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was very distressed. The children of Israel cried to Yahweh, saying, We have sinned against you, even because we have forsaken our God and have served the Baals. Comment, the Ammonites oppressed the Israelites on the far side of the Jordan for 18 years. Then they began to invade on the near side of the Jordan as well. After serving numerous foreign gods, Israel has now turned to Yahweh for relief. They're serving foreign gods in fair weather, but crying to Yahweh in foul weather. Verse 10, Yahweh said to the children of Israel, Didn't I save you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines? The Sidonians also, and the Amalekites and the Maonites oppressed you, and you cried to me, and I saved you out of their hand. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore, I will save you no more. Go and cry to the gods which you have chosen. Let them save you in the time of your distress. Comment. That was a list of seven enemies which Yahweh defeated in the past for Israel. We're unfamiliar with the conflicts with Maon and Sidon. Those incidents went unrecorded, but we know about the other five. But now Yahweh says in verse 13, I will save you no more. You've been bowing down to other gods. Let them save you. This is a fulfillment of what Yahweh said through Moses in Deuteronomy 32, verses 37 and 38, quote, 
Yahweh will say, where are their gods? Let them rise up and help you, end quote. So there was a delay in Yahweh coming to help. But going on to verse 15, the children of Israel said to Yahweh, we have sinned. Do to us whatever seems good to you. Only deliver us, please, today. They put away the foreign gods from among them and served Yahweh, and his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Come and Israel put away their foreign gods, even without the leadership of a judge. Now Yahweh's soul is grieved on account of their misery. Verse 17. Then the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped in Gilead. The children of Israel assembled themselves together and encamped in Mizpah. Comment, Israel has assembled themselves to fight against Ammon. Verse 18, the people, the princes of Gilead said to one another, who is the man who will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Comment, the princes of Gilead or the leaders in the camp are looking for someone to lead them in battle, but there don't seem to be any candidates. We'll leave it right there because that was the last verse of the chapter. But overall, there's a message that's becoming crystal clear in Judges. We should stay faithful to Yahweh in good times and bad. We shouldn't wait for God to impose discipline. We should impose it on ourselves at all times on a consistent basis without ever forgetting. What's a disciple of Christ without discipline? Let's keep ourselves disciplined and prevent problems. It's better than solving them. Judges 11 is next, which you can find easily at landofhavilah.net. Judges 11. This is the map of Judges 10. Tola the judge was from Issachar, but he lived and was buried in Ephraim. Jair the judge was from Gilead, which was across the Jordan. Especially Gilead refers to the mountainous area here. After Jair died, the Philistines from this area on the southwest and the Ammonites from this area on the east oppressed Israel. At the conclusion of the chapter, Israel and Ammon assembled themselves to do battle somewhere in the region of Gilead. Specifically, the Israelite camp was in Mizpah, exact location uncertain. Judges 11 is next.